others, all his friends, his whole life was a fire. Uh, he did out of service in World War II. He joined the fire department, got married in 1949, and it was probably one of the biggest days of his life when he joined the fire department. The second one was a year later when he had me. Uh, okay, this program tonight, there's so much history to the fire department between the fires and the different apparatuses and the parades and the history of what they did for other communities and stuff. So, uh, Linda Mullen and I, she should have her name up here too. We worked together. They went through many, many pictures. Of course, if we showed all the sober fire department pictures, she'd be here for four months. <laughs> and newspaper clippings and uh, things. But I want to bring out in this PowerPoint the things that the Dover Fire Department did that was recognized through the whole country, the United States. And it was early on when the fire department was organized and there was not a lot of fire departments in neighboring communities and big historic things happened. And we'll see some of the newspaper clippings and pictures and history that put the Dover Fire Department on the map nationwide, which is very unusual, you know, for a, a town this size, but uh, you got to start somewhere. So I, we thought we'd start with the early part of uh, the fire department. So the fire department's beginning from 1856 to 73, there were only two major fires in Dover. But on a cold day in 73, the Palmer and Allen Carpenter shop on the second floor of LA Foundry took, had a fire. The wood shavings above the sparks below created a volatile situation, especially when Dover had no fire department at all. And that's when the town was starting to grow. There was industry, there were more people having houses, uh, a lot of lumber, fire burning stoves, a lot of things to, that were starting to come to be. And uh, so the town said, well, we should have a fire department. So that's when it happened on uh, October 12th, 1874. And this was the first fire apparatus that the town had. And it was a handheld pumper that belonged to McFarland to protect his, uh, his family. So he donated it to the fire department, and that was the Dover Fire Department's first apparatus. And there were three or four members on each side. What they would do is pump down create a suction, and they had to have a water source, so they had to have something going into the water, either the Rockaway River, the Mill Pond, Brown's Pond. Uh, Dover had a lot of water back then, even a quartz pond on 2nd Street. So that was one of the major reasons why the uh, fire department built the building, the first building, on Sussex Street, because it was right next to the uh, Rockaway River, and at that time, the Mars Canal. So that was a perfect location. Plus, it was in the center of town. And the first fire company was the Protection Hook and Ladder organized on February 12, 1874. And on a couple of days later, engine company number one was established. And on the 17th, the Brindleman <coughs> Hose Company number two was organized. The Board of Wardens of three companies was formally organized by the town in March 1874. So that was the dates that when people would say, when did the fire department start? And I found out recently through some research that when the fire department, we didn't have one, the Marstown Fire Department was organized in 1867. And they contacted this guy that was, we don't know his name, but his nickname was Colonel Stiles, and he was invited to come to Dover after he heard that we're going to start a fire department, and he's the one that told them Dover how to set up a fire department, because Marstown's fire department was only six or seven years old. So they had an idea, they wanted to know, get input and stuff, because this was all brand new. So here's a picture here of uh, engine company number one. Why did they have different numbers then? Number one, number two, and number three. Don't ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they had different companies, different groups of men. Oh, and, all right. And, 
that they had a certain, you know, and they were attached to that one apparatus. It was from company number one. They had that truck. Company number two, you know, had a truck. And okay. for many years, they even chose their own colors of their firemen's uniforms. Some had a blue sash. Some had a red sash. You know, and then a night, I forgot what year it was, that they all just, I think it was 1941, they all became one yeah. color, I, I believe. Huh? So, uh, so that was the very beginning of the fire department, and then with the handheld pumper and stuff, that's how they fought fires. Mm -hmm. This was the original firehouse. People don't remember. I was in there until I was like uh, mm -hmm. 11 years old. Mm -hmm. That's the one that had the pole in it. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We were talking about that. Yep. Yeah. So this is a, this is a, it's probably been a beautiful building. They had the bay doors for the, for the uh, man blossom. You can see the steam pump on the left hand side. And then uh, after the hand pumper was developed, the cities and everything needed something to reach their second, third, and fourth building floors. So because of the railroad industry, somebody designed the steam pumper, the fire truck. And I didn't know how involved it is. It was it's pretty ingenious. And that's they started then around 1880. So uh, this is the original one. And later on, you'll see there's a light on the right-hand side. That's where the police station was. Attached, attached to the building. And the Central Railroad building is where that Lawton sign is. That's still there today, the historic building. And right where the flag is covering up is uh, with the fire bell. And somewhere in the literature, it tells you how heavy it was. And that's what uh, alarmed the town that there was a fire in the firemen. And during the war years, in 1941, they actually took the bell down and scrapped it. And my father cried because he said the original members of the fire department names were inscribed inside the bell. Something that was lost and could never be recovered. You look back today and say, how did they do that? But my father said at the time, during the war, there wasn't even a you know, second thought about doing it. And Dover had a lot of drive through town with all the aluminum and stuff like that. They took the uh, the old cannons from World War One that was around Hurt Park, and they scrapped them also. And they were four of them that were actually in the battlefields in World War One. All right, Dover's famous Man Blossom. Uh, there's there's many postcards and pictures and newspaper articles about these two horses. They were known all over the town. Anytime there was a fire, back in the day, when many people didn't have transportation, they would run to the firehouse to follow the horses to see which street they were on. They were going to go up Morris Street, they were going to go up Laffer Street, and they went up there with bicycles to follow them. And my father said it was very exciting because the whole town came alive and you would hear the fire whistle and 20 minutes later you would see 40, 50 kids coming around the block with bicycles and they followed the fire trucks or the main block. Here's a nice picture of a nice picture showing uh, an aerial photograph. I mean, an, air, an aerial ladder. And uh, they were well known, you know, not just in the town of Dover, but through the state, through the fire department. Uh, Man Blossom were really uh, represented and uh, became part of history forever. Here's a postcard of Man Blossom holding the equipment. And uh, see the railroad tracks. Me and Blossom are like in the middle of the scene, and uh, you can see the crowds around them and everything, which I'm sure they drew all, all the time. And you can see the steamer on the uh, on the left hand side. So every night the town folk would go to the firehouse because they had a drill and it was called running to the pole. So the horses might not see a fire or not be active for two days, three weeks, who knows. But when there was a fire, they had to be ready. So they were at the back of the fire station, and they were at the pole, and they, they summoned to the pole at the entrance of the fire department, and that's when harnesses were jumped, would come on to the horses, and they would strap them up. 
And they did this every day, every night. So when time came, they were ready. <clears throat> Dalmatian. Uh, why did early flight pilots have Dalmatians? And I did some research to find out that the Dalmatian is the only breed of dog that was very friendly and didn't intimidate horses. I didn't know that. It's something I thought was kind of remarkable. So that's why the fire departments, many of them had Dalmatians, and kept the, the horses company. And if there are rats or anything farming in the, in the building, the dogs would chase them out. So uh, years ago, there used to be Dalmatian mascots, even though they're, uh, they were faded out from uh, being around the horses and everything. There's many parade roads and you've seen Dalmatians up sitting next to the driver. I haven't seen any lately, but that was a, that was a big uh, thing associated with the, with the firemen. The fire department building was overhauled in 1914 and the police station was added to the fire station. So uh, this was all on Sussex Street. <coughs> And the building lasted, I think, for 67 years until 1961 when they tore the fire department building down and ended the fire department is now on Warren Street. And there was a lot of reasons for that because there was uh, fire equipment was getting bigger. They couldn't buy new trucks or new or new hook and ladder to fit it in this building. So the town decided to have a new municipal building. And they said if the fire department was going to be in that location, but they moved it to the other side across from Trousers over by Salvation Army. So that's how that got to be there. And that's how it looked on Sussex Street. And on the left hand side, you can see the Ulster Iron Works and the Rockaway River. And like I said, that, they were, that was a water source, and that was one of the main reasons why they built that uh, firehouse at that location. And there's motorized trucks. This is what I was talking about earlier. <clears throat> Through the early fires, the wood frame buildings around the historic building were rebuilt using brick. But at the turn of the century, when the fire department was formed, most of the structures and houses were wood. And a lot of them had fireplaces, a lot of them had wood burning stoves. <coughs> and then years later, there was a lot, my father said there was a lot of fires from like November to March because people bought Christmas trees and put them in our house and if they didn't water them, they became dry, they became brittle. And uh, today you can buy a tree, you know, that uh, can't, can't catch on fire, it's different colors. So that was one reason too why uh, there was a lot of buildings and stuff that would be redone over in the historic district with brick buildings and uh, Different looks, and the fire department was growing also to keep up with their demands. There was a big fire. It was nicknamed the Baker Block Fire in 1885. And this prompted George Richards, who was the first mayor of Delaware, to fund the purchase of number two flat steamer from the Hudson, New York. And that's it in action. And you wonder how they put anything out when you look at these old photos, because <laughs> they're up on the ladder. Two men have a hose over their shoulder. How steady is that? And then you see one going up the ladder. And uh, you see all the smoke and everything. It was, it was a major fire. And uh, when you look at these old photographs, uh, the one thing that uh, these gentlemen had in 1885, and these gentlemen that I have standing behind me, the fire department, is they all contributed to the community to make the community safe, save lives and save buildings. So that's their lineage used to come back from 1874 to present that uh, the fire department is well established and has a tremendous amount of history. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> where exactly is the Baker Block? That was right up down the street from the, from the Baker Theater at the time. Oh, okay. Yep, on Black Street. The Rich Point in the Fire, June 1914. The Rich Point in Stoberg's burned to the ground in 1914. It was a huge, huge factory. And they made what they 
full of a perfect range. And uh, it's it was located on Route 15 where the big blue <coughs> building is and it says Dover Tubular. Mm -hmm. That was the whole area where Rich Boyd oh, was. Oh, that was that there. That's yeah, going to be a big the, warehouse soon. That was, yes. Yeah. Well, that the whole area mm -hmm. was the Rich Boyd and Stover's. We have some great pictures of at the museum of the people working inside. It's fantastic pictures. So I invite everybody here today to come to the museum. We have a lot more memorabilia and pictures of everything in Dover and the fire department. As a matter of fact, the whole second floor is like dedicated to the fire department with medals and pins and things going back to 1899, 1901. And the fire department itself downstairs have a showcase Probably, I think it's like three walls of trophies and stuff that they've won trophies over the years. Some of them are very, very old. Here's another fire. I don't know why it's called a, the Hass fire, but that's what it was. We were buying tickets for the Baker Theater. The Baker Theater was right down at the left hand side. And the fire broke out at Abe's Dry Goods, the furniture store, and Nunn's Piano store. I believe that was upstairs. But also, you can see, in 1926, the, uh, the equipment and, uh, that they had, that they used to fight the fire with. And uh, you had to be a brave fireman any time you go into a fire, but I think those guys had to be a little bit braver. <laughs> Is that a lot of this on the ground there? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, here was another, July 26. They continue our school. And this wasn't, uh, this was by lightning strikes and uh, a lot of damage. And uh, I believe this was on a Sunday because I heard that there were a few fatalities, but there would have been a, a lot more if Picatinny Ar Arsenal was in op full operation. But here's some of the scenes. <coughs> of, uh, there were two lightning <coughs> strikes. And I don't know if that was the first or second one, but uh, it was during the thunderstorm. And uh, one lightning strike hit, hit the, I forgot how many tons of dynamite. Okay. It was left over from World War One, right? That's what I was thinking. Yes, yes, probably. Yeah. And this and this explosion blew all the windows out in the town of Dover. Everything on Blackwell Street, the churches, everything else, the windows were blown completely out. So you imagine, on that date, walking down the street, and all of a sudden the windows blow out, and you hear a rumble, and you had no idea what you know what happened. <clears throat> There's a car that was there, and here's some other other damage. I didn't know if that was hoses in the front of that picture, but it could be. Here's a, here's another scene, so you can see. <laughs> like the tin was nearly like destroyed. And that was all brick buildings and stuff. So you can imagine the the force and everything of a blast to do all that damage. Price Studio of Fire, 1935. Uh, Price was a very famous, is a very famous photographer that lived in Dover and took pictures of everything. Yearbooks, sporting events, weddings. He had a studio, and the shame of it was that in this fire, 1935, downstairs he had all this, the solenoid film of all the pictures, thousands of pictures of, that he took in Dover that were all gone in an instant, just like gasoline. So, uh, but his pictures are still all over. His postcards for Dover. So we're going to do a show on him sometime. Hiroshima, September 12, 1940, Hercules, people today don't remember, but the older kids remember there was a Hercules smokeless black powder uh, in, in the street in Kendall, New Jersey. You never know what was there now, it's just all woods. But this was caused, they believe, just before World War II by sabotage. And the reason people thought that was because this is the biggest supplier for black powder for the army. And Picatinny 
was the biggest making ammunition. So we believe that before the start of the war, these facilities were targeted to hurt the nation. And this also made the fire department really, really outstanding because of the Dover was the only fire department around that responded to this explosion. And 55 people were killed and 300 people were injured. Why was Dover the only fire department? Because back in the day, I mean, uh, Roxbury didn't have one. Oh, they didn't have them. Yeah, right. They just didn't have them. It was a, you know. And Dover had the Dover General Hospital, and they already had an established fire department with four or five trucks. Took a minor. They were experienced. So, uh, so here's a picture of Dover General. We had the only hospital in Dover. Yeah, at the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, this is a picture from the uh, the newspaper of all the uh, families and stuff, and you see an ambulance there. And Warden also had a fire department. I'm sure they attended and everything. But this is what put the Dover Fire Department on the map because it was mad, it was worldwide news. The people heard the hurricanes blew up. It, it was you know. It's just like today when we would hear about what happened in Hawaii, you know, like a, a big disaster. So even though it's thousands of miles from here, it did affect the nation. And uh, there was limited amounts of uh, ambulances and fire trucks. So the people that lived up in Roxbury and Sakasana, if they had a pickup truck and one man had a, uh, a milk business, he took all the milk carts and stuff out of the, out of the truck. And they put people in the truck, and they took them to the uh, to the hospital. So uh, it, it was really, really tragic. My cousin's uh, uncle uh, passed away, uh, dying that month. <clears throat> All right, I remember this because I was four years old. <clears throat> this is uh, down where the Dover Pet Shop was until a couple of years ago. And the Park Union Lumber Company is still around today, but it's at the end, it's down by McDonald's and Ricky Gardens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they have pictures inside that lumber yard and then from this fire. And uh, this was fought by Rockaway, Denville, Morton, Randolph, and Mount Hope. And uh, so, right where that column of flames and stuff is, is where the uh, Dover Pet Shop and everything was, and Snow's Glass. So uh, that was on a Thursday. It, was a, it started by two kids, reportedly, that were playing with matches. And they were just setting a couple of pieces of wood on fire and putting it out. Then they put two pieces of wood on fire and they couldn't put it out. <laughs> and that's when the, that's when there's all this. This is the back. This would be taken from like the train tracks would be in the back. So you can see that uh, that was a very, very, very big fire. That went on for days, didn't it? Yes, it did. Yeah. And I lived on Ridges Avenue at the time, and I felt the heat and everything. Yeah. Yep. And your father and my father were the first ones at that fire. I always heard that, yeah. Yes. Yep. All right, this was more recent, 1974. Oh, yeah. And uh, as you can see, in this picture, uh, the hook and ladder truck and the equipment. And uh, you can see how the equipment and everything progressed over the years, uh, which made it easier to fight fires and was safer for the firemen. So, uh, feel the hose. And people <laughs> think when the fire's out that the fireman's job is over, but these guys can tell you that they had to go back, they had to roll up and take all the water out of the hose. They had to put it on the truck. And no matter the time, anytime you visit, visit any fire department, it was clean as a whistle, spotless. Just like they had nothing better to do but clean the truck. <laughs> but there was a reason for that that I'll get to later on. That's the that clean. That was like from um, the post office out the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wolf's Cleaners is there. And I, I know my father and my uncle had to, to rescue my aunt at a wedding dress. Mm -hmm. 
Then they got divorced, so it didn't matter. <laughs> but Wolf's Cleaners was right along that block. Like from the post office, black off. That was a good fire. All right, over the years, we try to put this in a category so they can see the progression of the, of the uh, look how bright these guys are. And uh, the first firemen, the first people to fight fire in town. And uh, they probably wouldn't believe that Reedy sitting here at the Dover Library with a computer <coughs> showing these images. I mean, here is a fire, a steam fire apparatus. And does anybody here know how these work? It was, it was pretty interesting. I just never did it myself. I didn't know when I said I want to find out. Anyway, as make, this apparatus was started to form because of the uh, railroad industry with all the machines and pistons and suction and stuff like that. So we can't see it in this image, but underneath the boiler here, there was a tray that was full of charcoal. So when the fire started, they set the charcoal on fire. That's when you would see the smoke and the steam come out. And then after there was pressure, you can't see it in here, but there's a flywheel inside, like in the middle of the steamer, that would start to move. And when that did that, it brought air in. It started making suction. So I didn't know this, but every picture we ever see of a steamer, you see these big hoses, one on each side. So what they did was, they hooked up these hoses to a water source, might be the Rockaway River, might be the Mars Canal, and they would start sucking water in, and then there were smaller three or four valves on each side of the steamer that they hooked smaller hoses to. And because of the pressure of the steam and everything, and the water being sucked in, then they had these smaller hoses with a more pressure that could reach farther in uh, more of an area. So this really was, back in the day, a very ingenious thing to, you know, to build. Right? So that's the story with that. The Dover does have a steamer at the, uh, at the uh, antique barn that they have up in North Sussex Street that you've got to visit. And uh, the guys love to show off the equipment, and it's a mint condition. Rick, yes? We restored that steamer at least 20 years ago. We wanted to make it fully functional, but we couldn't for the fact that you needed a black seal license to operate it. Mm -hmm. The insurance would have killed it. The, uh, you'd have to tear it down every five years to have it reinspected. Really? So there was a lot of, yeah. you know, it's just a static display. Right. <laughs> but <laughs> it's gorgeous. But didn't you have the wheels done by the Amish? Had all of them. Had all between that, there was a spinning company in Towards Newark, we were dealing with. We did all the skins on it. I know you guys. I well, mean, you I guys. Had, seriously, you have to display your stuff four or five times during the summer, either at the park or by the museum, whatever. Because I think the town people would marvel to see what you did and restored. You know, in relation to the fire department. We were fortunate. We were in Hudson, New York, where Flap and Jones that built that steamer. Mm -hmm. They had a, a furnace there. There were three of them lined up. Wow. You know, and boom, the smoke that came up. That's what drew us in to go investigate. We know what was going on. These guys are pumping water with it. I mean, it was phenomenal. To I see. had to be. Well, thank you for that. All right. Now, here's a picture of the Duck Fireman Association that was organized in 1897. And that might have been the original, uh, or similar to it. I think there's a date on the side that I can't read, but I think it says 1874. We have that as well. Yep, I know, yep. But it still works. Yep. <laughs> and that's not me and Blossom. No. All right, here's one of Dover's first uh, fire apparatuses that was, uh, I had a motor. And you can see, uh, this is 1923, and uh, I think everybody knows that there was a hose bed in the back of all the fire departments back then, 
and then there was a rack here that they pulled out, you know, and that was all wrapped up. And they had a bell. So uh, everybody likes to look at fire trucks, you know, especially the older ones. They really had a character and a feel to them. Here's another picture of a truck with a driver in front of the firehouse. Look at the big headlights and the, and the bell. And actually, that had the light, I think, in the back. Ah, uh, here's the one I think all the firemen loved, right? It's a mink condition. It's up at North Sussex Street in Mary Kane's garage. The pedals, the threads on the on the tire, the hoses, everything is like it just came out of the show. It's absolutely gorgeous. And uh, the members of the fire department will tell you that when they take that to a parade, that a truck has won many trophies for antique apparatus. Here's one in front of the uh, Right in front of the old firehouse. 1949. Yeah, this truck was, my father told me the story of this truck that it drove from Goshen, Wisconsin to make the 4th of July parade in 1949. And I didn't realize at the time until I started this PowerPoint that that was the 75th anniversary for the fire department. So the town didn't see this ladder truck until July 4th. It was 102 degrees, and uh, everybody stopped to watch these guys go up, and they were the uh, captains of the company number one and two and so forth, by the George Richards building. Also in 1949, they went down to the football field, which at that time was the Gunther football field, the Hamilton field, and uh, the town sat on bleachers, and the town did a uh, display of how to rescue people. So this was right there in the middle of a football field in 1949, and one of the firemen dressed up as a woman, and there was screaming and yelling at the, at the windows, and the fireman went up there and put him over the shoulder and came down, and uh, it was exciting. I was promoted the fire department and, and you know, so, okay, here's early fire department photos. I think this was taken across the street from uh, the Baker Insurance Company. It wasn't in front of the firehouse. They were all volunteers? Yes, they were all volunteers. And you can see the, uh, you can barely see the truck, but you can see it's a steamer. You can see the American flag on the left hand side. And then they all pose for it. Yeah, and good chances that John Price took this photo, you know, because that's what he did. 1898, here's all the members of the company number one. And for 1898, to have a display like this is pretty impressive, you know, to do a collage and have all their pictures and stuff like that. Here's an uncle. Number two. Here's another old one, 1901. Okay, this was 1930, but it wasn't the. I don't. Yes, it was. Was it the? No, it wasn't a firehouse. I don't think it was a firehouse. But the building looks familiar. <laughs> yes, it could be because that's the bay doors and stuff. I believe it was a firehouse, and that would be the police station where that white light is. Yeah, that would make sense. That would be the old firehouse. Oh, in 1931. I was wrong before. 1931 is when the uniforms purchased so everyone looked alike. And that's when they have the buttons on the vest and the badge and they had the same hat. Uh, or like I said earlier on, that you can tell a company number one from number three because they had a different uniform or a different sash or a different hat. So that's the year that uh, they decided to have uh, the same uniforms. Another progressive, you know, that the fire department made. 1933 first aid squad. <coughs> so this was in front of the old high school. 1935 fire department. And as you can see, 31, they used the same uniforms. 
four years later, there's proof. They all have white gloves, all have the same uniforms. There's a truck in the back for the driver. Ernie Tucker took over the task of paid driver from Jake Nichols in 1931. Before the motorized truck, Jake was a driver for Team Horses. Ernie was a driver from 1931 to 1945, and he had a move from East Blackwell home to an apartment on North Sussex, so he would be close to the fire department. When he went to the Playhouse Theater to watch a movie, he was given a special seat when you walk in the theater, that was right on the edge of the aisle, so he can get out real quick. Hmm. And that's what he did. One of the, the fire dogs that the department had at, at at the time fell in love with Ernie Tucker. And when the fire whistle blew, the firemen run to the firehouse to get in uniform and get their boots and stuff on, which took time. This dog wouldn't let him in the firehouse because he liked his owner, Ernie Tucker, and he thought the fire truck was his property. <laughs> so the fire department would run into the firehouse and then run back out because the dog would chase him out. 1961, this is the first year that the fire department in the municipal building opened up, and that's the fire department on the Warren Street side. That's there today. And the police department is in the building on the left and upstairs. So that's all the fire captains. And the gentleman in the middle with the white hat is the chief. And that's my father. My father grew up right next to the firehouse his whole life and watched the fire trucks leave the building. And he never thought one day that he'd become the chief of the fire department in his office and everything was only maybe 20 or 30 yards from where his house was. So it was a very proud moment for him, and that was in 1961. Anybody that went to Fireman's Parade years ago, remember these guys, the Dover Gutter Band. And uh, there were some Dover firemen that were, they were all good musicians, and a lot of them were also uh, were firemen. And uh, if you were involved in parades many, many years ago, you saw the Gutter Band, the Dover Cadets, a lot of local high school bands, drum corps. And the Denver String Band was frequent at many, many craze. People might remember them. But these people, uh, they remembered them. And they, they were really, really good. And I don't think they ever missed a parade. So for decades, the fire department not only protected the citizens, but uh, they formed strong bonds. And one of the bonds that they had was the Star Parades many, many years ago. And when the parade started, they brought their trucks, they brought their men with them, and they went down and marched them proudly in front of the towns. But over the years, it progressed, and it got competitive. They started to have judges for most people in line, and the best color guard, the best musical unit, the best antique truck. And uh, the Dover Fire Department always did proud and won many, many awards over the years. But other big departments that were very proud also in Morris County was the Wharton Fire Department and the Booton Fire Department, who started trades and still have one today on Labor Day, started in the 1880s. But the trades were judged for marching. Here's an early picture of 1910 of the, of the firemen. And even though it's an early picture and the fire department is huge, member wise, you can see how people dressed up on both sides of the street. One third of the picture on what a white pole is, that's where you see uh, Mayhem Blossom and the steamer. And the steamer, I just want to point it out because they, they get good recognition. That's easy to miss. Okay. Independence Day, July 4th, 1949, we celebrated the uh, 75th anniversary. And if you look at the itinerary of all that they did, this is in 1949, and they had 50 fire departments, bands, drum corps, apparatus, and floats. So when you read that a parade was going to start at noontime, that was the start of the parade. 
the parades and the festivities didn't end till at night when they gave trophies out. At the end of the parades, a lot of bands or drum corps would put their instruments down. They would have some birch beer and stuff that was offered to them for free. And an hour later, the director would say, we're gonna have a jam session. They would pick up their instruments and they would play their routine. People applauded it, they loved it, drew a crowd. 10 minutes later, there'd be another drum corps band starting up and doing the same thing. So it was an all-day event. So uh, they had George Pierce, unique gutter band. And uh, this, this was uh, the year my father joined. But uh, this one reason, like I said, there's, there's people here today that are friends of my father going way back uh, because of the fire department. The fire department was always like a clergy. You were oh, yes, kids absolutely. and everything. You were a family. Yep. Here's a picture, another picture of the 1949 a parade with the, with the George Richards building in the background that was Berkeley College five or six years ago and uh, the J.J. Newberry's is what a lot of people remember it for. I do. And at the very top of the George Richards building, it's still there today, you'll see 1869. And that was the year that George Richards became the first mayor of Dover with 65 votes that were taken at the mansion house. 1961 Wellington Parade, 120 volunteers. In those days, you had to be on a waiting list to get into the fire department. Hmm? In those days, you had to be on a waiting list to get into the fire department. Oh, yes, department. yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, uh, the firemen are brave, and they're, they're educated how to fight fires, and uh, they help the community out. The parade was what I believe was the Saturday, whatever, when they really wanted to showcase their equipment and the size of the apartment. And they made friends. The Dover Fire Department got people from the Booth Fire Department, got people from the Wharton Fire Department. They had clam bakes and they fought fires together. And a big fire, Wharton would come down, Roxbury, Denville would all assist. So after a while, it wasn't just the Dover Fire Department, it was the firemen that were fighting these fires together as one big unit. Another nice picture of, uh, of the parade. And I was in the Dover Cadets Drum and Bugle Corps, and we always thanked the Dover Fire Department for hiring us and keeping us financially fit because we looked at our schedule and we said, oh, we've got five firemen's parades, and they're off to Dover. We did movies, we did Marstown, we marched for the Dover Fire Department. And they sponsored us. This, I think, was the last trophy in 1965 that the Dover Cadets got. And it was in, uh, where was it? <laughs> Greenwood Lake. Now that's my brother on the left hand side. And that was a girl, Pam, somebody that was in the color guard. And we won first prize as musical unit in that parade. And also, on the right-hand side is the Dover Fire Department, who we marched for, that also were won first prize in the parade, all around. So uh, I'm glad I kept this newspaper. <laughs> and I marched in that parade also. 1972, 275th anniversary parade. And uh, it's hard to believe that was 72, because it didn't only seem like five years ago. People that that were there, and uh, there's the fire department coming up Blackwell Street, and uh, like I said, they just do the town crowd when people see the fire department, and the kids see the fire department, and a lot of kids made a decision back then that they want to become firemen when they see when they see a parade like this. So, the fire department always did the town crowd over the years, and was respected throughout the state of New Jersey. And the reason I put this in at the end of the program is to show that uh, the Baker Fire in 1885 with the Dover Fire run up there, and then in the fire that the <coughs> department attended five, you know, about a month ago, three or four weeks ago, maybe five weeks, and see the difference with Flanders came down with their aerial ladder. And uh, when I left the house and I heard the fire whistles, continually blowing, 
I said, well, there might be a fire somewhere. So I looked out my front door, and I looked down, and I seen all this smoke. Well, the first thing I thought was, was the museum. <laughs> so I rushed down there, I was hoping it wasn't the museum. So I went down there, and I parked the car, bought the camera, and that's one of the first scenes that I see was the uh, was Wharton's truck up there. And uh, to explain earlier, like I said, they had the steamer and they had uh, certain fire departments that were part of Dover's mutual aid back in the day. But then I was there for about 10 minutes and I heard more sirens. And I said, well, Dover only has so many trucks. Down Prospect Street from Grandorf, I was blown, I got chilled. I said, wow. This is amazing. And then I heard somebody from a command center, don't know who it was, but you can hear the voice directing the different departments and where to go to fight the fire. And then I seen drones go up in the air to check on the top of the buildings. Altogether different than 1874. <laughs> I was so impressed. It was incredible. Then I heard other trucks come up. And then Denville was there and they were instructed well, they don't know what the street is. Well, they did. They went down Vassal Highway. They parked behind the other truck. This truck needed some more water. All of a sudden, a big water truck tank came and hooked up to, to, the, to the truck. And I was blown away by that truck there because you can see in the bottom of that truck, there's like two stances. Mm -hmm. And when that truck was facing up the hill, of course, it was at an angle. And you heard, boom, 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 and the whole truck was leveled off. I could not believe what I was seeing. And all the kids looking at all the firemen getting dressed and running down the street and everything, I must have heard 40 kids say, I want to be a fireman. This is cool. So it's going to continue on. <laughs> Sorry to be so dramatic. I was tired that day. I was tired that day. All day. So, so anyway, uh, I think this is the last slide. Yes. And next year, you're going to be 150 years old. Right? So we've got to plan some stuff to keep. And I want to thank the library, the fire department, Dover Harris Historical Society for all coming together tonight for this presentation. So I want to thank everybody very much for showing up. Thank you. And hope you enjoyed it.